Hi, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, which is part 24, I am finally going to be fitting this rear wheel arch. So let's crack on with it. I'm going to start by gluing this, the, what, the remainder of the panel onto the um, supports that are behind it, there and there. It's already glued there, so if I clamp that down and glue it overnight, it should keep that nice and straight. And then I'm going to clean up all the areas on here and on the repair section ready for welding. to give it a trial fit and make sure that I'm happy with everything before I set it up permanently.
quite a lot of fiddling. Um, I'm happy that this all lines up nicely. Um, what I need to do now is take it off. Um, I want to trim the flange, this flange down here a bit, so it matches the one on the inside. Um, and then I need to put some um, tiger seal on various areas which uh, help support this. And I also need to put a seal on around here to replace the one that was there originally, which I'll, I'll show you afterwards. Um, and then I can start welding this panel on. to do is to use this uh, silicon sealant, it's a grey outdoor weatherproof sealant and I'm going to put a bead in all the way along this groove here because originally there was a, um, a rubber seal in there and presumably that's to stop any moisture from coming down here, getting past it, running into this area and then rotting out this inner edge. Um, so if I put a nice big thick bead in all the way around and then place the wing on it, it should create a really nice seal all the way around there. Then as I said before, I can um, inject wax oil into this cavity through these plug holes. Um, and I'm also going to use tiger seal on here and here. Um, to give the, the wing a bit of solidity, or the wheel arch a bit of solidity, and also some, some on here as well. And then get welding.
tomorrow when I take it off it, the, the um, a, a sieve will have uh, dried and it will all be nice and solid and in this area here it's a lot more solid than it was the oil coming is almost gone so let's see what it's like tomorrow morning dried and everything seems really solid which is good what's interesting is this oil canning is gone you could probably still do is shrinking it a bit but the oil canning is gone so uh, that's good what I'm going to do next is refit the sliding door um, so that I can weld this um, edge up and get the profile right for the door and I'll need the door on anyway when I start um, doing some filler work to get this profile perfect. Right well I've spent the last two hours maybe two and a half hours trying to get this door to sit flush and I can get it perfect all the way around all the gaps are nice except for this part here on the new wing or the wheel arch um, and the profile is just wrong there's about a four millimeter step down um, between the door and the wheel arch um, probably I should have had the door on when I fitted the wheel arch but I didn't so the only thing that I can think of doing and what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to cut it, slice it along here and prise it up to get the right profile and then weld in a strip, a wedge or a sandwich of uh, steel in here to make up the gap.
a low spot just there, but I think with a light skim of filler, which I'm going to have to do anyway, um, that will take care of that. But everywhere else, just here in the corner, it's nice and flush and up there. So it's the best of a bad job, but it, it'll, it'll be okay. It'll be good enough. It'll be fine. All I need to know is weld up this cut I put in here, finish welding this up, grind it all back, clean it up, and that should be fine. job there. Um, it's turned out about as well as I could expect uh, with a light skim of filler over it. I think it'll be fine. Um, it's not ideal but it's a lot better than it was. I've got a little bit of welding to do here and here and I've got to grind and then grind these down and grind that down and then I can start prepping it for paint. to do now is grind this weld down but obviously I've got to do it really carefully so that I don't get any more heat into this panel.
reasonably happy with the way it's, it's gone. Um, the only thing left is to see if I can shrink this bit of metal here. Um, I haven't got any oxyacetylene. I've got a blowtorch, but I haven't got the confidence to use that on here, especially as I can't get to the back of it. Um, so I thought I'd try using a shrinking disc. Um, I haven't got one, so I thought I'd make one. So what I've done is I've taken a stone, 10 inch stone cutting disc that I had that was worn out. I roughly cut it down to the size that I wanted, which is about six inches. I then um, cleaned up the edges, put it on the grinding wheel, on the, on, the, on the grinder, cleaned the edges up with a file um, and another grinder and then I've rolled over the edge and I've polished it and from what I can understand the idea is, is that if I run this over here the edge of it it will pick up all the high spots, heat them up and then I've got some water and a damp cloth and I'll use that to quickly quench the surface and that will contract the metal and tighten everything up. Well that's the theory, I don't know whether it's going to work but it's worth a try.
has been the total success. I'm gobsmacked. I'm amazed at how well that's worked. You know, um, it's taken me, it took me half an hour to make this disc, and it's taken me half an hour to get all the oil coming out of that and shrink it. And it, it seems to me that the trick of it is, is that, I mean, the, the um, metal seems to move around. You get rid of it here, and it moves it down to here, and then over to here, and then here, and etc. But eventually you can get the whole lot. And the trick of it, having never done it before, and I, I've never had any lessons or anything like that on it, just common sense, but the, the, the trick of it to me seems to me that if you have an area of oil cutting and it feels about that big, is to just focus on the centre with, with the edge and just go in small and just get the centre nice and hot and then quench it. And when you quench it, it doesn't tighten up immediately. It takes 10, 15 seconds and you can, see, you can actually see it going tight. And when you're going over it with this, you can actually see the metal starting to move and as soon as you see it starting to move, take it off and then cool it down. Um, so yeah, I mean, even if you haven't got a second hand old stone cutting disc, they're only about £10 to buy, 10 15 quid to buy, compared to, you know, a shrinking disc which seems to be about 60 or £70, and I know they're made out of stainless steel, I don't know what difference that makes, but this seems to have worked fine, it hasn't, it, it hasn't marked the metal, you can see where it's been, but it's not dug in or anything. It's not damaged it, and that has worked really, really, really well. Really pleased with that, and it's something that I'm going to do a bit more practicing with because I think if you could get really good with this, you could straighten out a lot of panel work really easily. So yeah, that's the result. Well, I think on that note, that's going to be it for this one. Um, in the next episode I'm going to be prepping all of this for paint, getting all the filler work done and getting it primed up um, and uh, I'll, get a, I'll feel a lot better about the whole thing then because you know that will be the last bit of metal work and welding all complete. So until then, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, please comment, like, subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.